Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get into our place of praise and worship. I don't know about you, but I need this praise this morning. I need this worship this morning. Anybody else need this worship this morning? Anybody else need this worship this morning? I need this worship. I need this worship. I need this worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we come on down, those who can come to the front. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes. Oh, we think about it we and we release you, our we praise you, to you right you. now. We charge the atmosphere you, with worship you. right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. We glorify you today, oh God. We magnify you today, oh God. Be exalted in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We bless your name. Yeah, 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 yeah. We want your spirit to break out today. Have your way. You're the one we're lifting high today. Have your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way. Let's sing our Father. Our Father. <laughs> all of heaven. Thank you. Sing loud. Sing loud. Let this place erupt. Let this place erupt with praise. You. Can you feel I need the you, voice I need of you. heaven? I need you, I need you. The sound of heaven touching earth. Let's sing that again. Yes. Our Father, our Father, all of I heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Yes. Let this place, let this place erupt. The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven. Now tell him all at once, spirit. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Break our walls down. Oh, we want your spirit to break out today. Spirit, break out. Spirit, break out. Oh, we want heaven to touch earth. Say, heaven, come down. Heaven come down. Okay, we're gonna go and tell them, King Jesus, you're the one. King Jesus, you're the one we're lifting high. We're lifting your, high. Glory. your glory, touching both the earth and sky. Revive, we wanna see your kingdom here. Jesus, King, Jesus. you're the one, you're the one you're we're lifting high. We're lifting your high. glory, shaking up the shaking earth and sky. Earth and sky. Revival. Revival, we want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. Tell them, Spirit, break out. Spirit, break out.
tell him one more time. King Jesus, King Jesus, you're the one. You're the name we're lifting high. Your glory shaking up the revival, revival. We want to see your kingdom here. Tell him one more time. We want to see your kingdom here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want your spirit come on, to come break on, come out on. today. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Spirit Hallelujah. break out, break out in this Hallelujah. place today. Hallelujah. 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 Heaven come down. Hallelujah. Come meet us today, oh God. Come on, come on, come on, come on, let's worship it. Father, we bless you. We bless your name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to your name, Lord. Oh, praise your name, Father. Hallelujah. Such a wonderful Lord, Lord. And we glorify you. Hallelujah. Break out in us, O oh Lord. Let your spirit break out, Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for sending your son to earth. As a baby so many years ago, oh God, we thank you that he paid the punishment for our sin by dying on the cross. So Lord, and we thank you that he, was, he rose again to prove that death was truly defeated. Oh, we... Please place our trust in you to be our Savior. Lord, we thank you. So gracious, loving, and merciful God, on this Christmas Eve, as the light of your word penetrates our hearts, as we are reminded of the gift of life and faith, as the glories of the heaven host are echoed in our church today, Lord, we open ourselves up for your spirit and give you thanks, Lord. We give you thanks. We are so grateful, Lord Jesus, that your story has become our story. And we celebrate your birth to take to heart the wonders of your love. That we may walk in your ways and delight in your will. Help us, Lord God, to be the faithful gracious, loving, giving, and forgiving people you would have us to be. Help us richly to remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Close the doors of hate and open the doors of, of love in this fellowship and all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greetings. Deliver us from evil by the blessing that God, Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clean hearts Lord shine the light of your love deep within the hearts of all those that do not know you as Savior we pray and light the minds of those that are blinded to the truth of the glorious gospel of Christ Jesus and our Jesus our Lord and Lord we pray that you would draw many into your arms of forgiveness so that they too might be made right before God and receive his peace into their hearts at this time. 
so that the goodwill that you promised by the angels so many years ago might become their portion today. Grant all those that know and love you as Savior to be specially blessed this Christmas and may you draw each one ever closer to your heart of love in a world that is becoming darker so that the light of your truth may shine through us to a world that who, who needs Jesus in whom whose name we, we pray so thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord for the gift of your love May we be a shining example of that love to others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the And the mountains And the mountains in reply Echoing let me hear you sing Gloria. Gloria in excelsis day. Gloria, oh, 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 We're gonna sing verse one again angels angels we have heard on high sweetly singing o'er the plain and the mountains in reply echoing their joy is strange Oh! 
worship.
do it one more time. Tell them you can. sins are paid. Lord, you planned it so great. You planned it so well. We thank you for that, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you worship. For, Lord, you are worthy. Lord, as, as, a, as a choir was singing, Lord, I was, I was thinking the angels are singing along with them. And it's just one great swelling chorus of worship and adoration unto you, Lord, for you are worthy, 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 worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, I hold up this fellowship before you, Lord. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you would bring forth healing and deliverance, oh God. For Father, there are myriads of things, O oh Lord, that you went on the cross and died for. Lord. And that you rose about the grave, justifying us for the freedom of it, Lord. So, Lord, I'm praying, Lord, healings, O oh God. I'm declaring, Lord, healings, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Healings in hearts, healings in minds, healing in relationships, healings in bodies, O oh God. Declaring the healings, oh God. Healings from financial hardships, oh God. Healings complete, total. Because Lord, you paid for it all. You did it all. And we thank you for it. 
we give you honor we give you praise father i'm holding up those oh lord that we're praying for the lord in particular oh god our dear brother joe walker oh god declaring healing in his body our dear deacon fred gray oh god declaring healing in his body our sister michelle addison declaring healing in her body oh god she's a collie oh god we're declaring healing oh god in her body oh god arlene oh god we're declaring healing in her body oh lord in the name of jesus father we're declaring healing oh lord in the family that i had loved ones oh god that have departed to go to be with you father we're holding up the reed family oh god the nixon family and the underwood family oh god Father, that you would surround them, Lord, with your arms, oh Lord. That they would even hear you sing over them. As you said in Zephaniah 3.17, you sing songs over them. Father, that they would know, Lord, in the deepest places of their hearts. The deepest places, oh God. That you care, that you're, you're, you're right there, oh God. And Father, not just these three families, oh Lord, but all of the families, all of those, oh God, that are suffering, oh God, from not having their loved ones here this year. Lord, I, I know, Lord, in, in Christmas time, Lord, and it, it becomes especially hard, even if it's been for years and years. So, Father, I'm including them also, Lord. Father, that they would know, oh God, your love beyond the shadow of a doubt and your caring and your keeping and your blessing and your strength, oh God. Father, that you, oh Lord, would enlighten their heart, oh God, with your joy. Not just happiness, Lord, but your joy. That conscious, conscious knowing that you, oh God, love them and care for them. And that they have nothing to worry about. Because, Lord, you are on their side. That them and you are a majority. And I thank you for that. Now, Father, you've told us also to pray for our country, oh God. To pray for our leaders, oh Lord. I'm not going to forget that, oh God. Father, because you said that if they have peace, we have peace. So, Father, I'm holding up our president before you, Lord. We're holding up Donald Trump, oh God. We're holding up his family. And we're holding up Mike Pence, oh God, and his family. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would draw them into your kingdom. That you would get their minds right with you, oh God. That you would deliver them, oh God, from the strongholds of pride, oh Lord. Deliver them from the strongholds of pride. Father, deliver them, Lord, from the strongholds of deception and self-deception, Lord. Father, I've seen it in their eyes, Lord. I've seen it on their continents, oh God. They need deliverance from it, Lord. So, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, destroy the strongholds, oh God. Break down, oh Lord, the resistance, oh God. The resistance, oh Lord, to you. In the name of Jesus. And Father, in that we have peace. We thank you. Now, Father, bless the Lord the rest of the service. Father, the speaker today, Lord, Father, we're looking for a great word, oh God, from you. We thank you, Lord, for being involved, oh Lord, in worship and adoration, oh God, with songs and dance. And Father, we give you praise for you're worthy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Don't they look beautiful? Amen. God is so good. There's no Christmas without who, guys? Whose birthday is it? Jesus. I can't hear you. Whose birthday is it? Jesus. Hallelujah.
rhythm and ovation. Wow. They bless me. They kept up that might make me want to dance. Hallelujah. Oh, stand up. Y'all got to give God a Christmas praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a Christmas praise. Go over to God. Children and our young adults on that creative arts. Y'all bless my heart. You, and you bless me every time you dance. You minister to me. While you're up, well, some of y'all ain't up. Get up. I want you to turn to your neighbor, turn to three people and tell them Merry Christmas and a favored New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord. Well, I don't know about you, I'm glad. I'm glad it's Christmas. Hallelujah. I'm glad I made it to another Christmas. I'm particularly glad this year because I was on my way to Virginia with my family and my car broke and the way it broke we could have had a major accident. And it was the favor of God. The favor of God. That, that got us off on the highway. Amen. So if you ain't praising them this morning, I'm praising them. If you ain't thankful for Christmas, I'm thankful. That's the reason I can sing this morning from the bottom of my heart. I am grateful for the things. Yes. I could go on Can you go on and on and on how good God has been to you this year? Because And I can sing it from my heart. Are the issues of my heart. Sing it one more time like you mean it, or if, you, if you're grateful. I am I'm grateful. grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, yes I'm grateful for the victories we've won. And you know what? I could go on and on. It's a never-ending story about your word. Because, because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart.
are the issues of my heart. Are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. He's been good. He's been good. He's been faithful. Sometime all I can just say in one word. Grateful. It's flowing from my heart. Grateful. 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 His gratefulness. His gratefulness. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to find three people and tell them what you're grateful for. How has God been good to you? Tell them what you're grateful for. I know what I'm grateful for. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Ah, glory to God. You got something to thank God for. Ha! Ah, Elder Scott got something to thank God for. So the rest of you can sit down on God, but we we got something to thank God for. You ain't gonna shut us up. You ain't gonna get us to close our mouth. You weren't there when he saved us. You weren't there when he blessed us. You weren't there when he helped us. You weren't there when he supported us. Hallelujah. So excuse us while we praise God. Ah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When they said you couldn't make it, guess what? Guess what? They were wrong. Whose report did you believe? Whose comments did you receive? Oh, hey, glory, hallelujah. If some of y'all had received the report of the enemy, you wouldn't even be here now. But look at the favor of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You walk in his favor. You live in his favor. You talk in his favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody going to feel this thing after a while. Hallelujah. When you start going back over your life, going back over this year, it was God's favor. Oh. Oh. 
Ah. Ah. It was just God's favor. His favor. His favor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. think you could pass the course. You didn't think you were going to finish school but the favor of God. You didn't think you were going to get that promotion but the favor of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. See, I know some of y'all stories. And I know why you're praising the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Hallelujah. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Amen. Go ahead, Jimmy, play it. Oh, y'all might as well sing it. Where would I be if it had not been it? it Sing it again. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, I dare you to stand up and sing it like you really mean it. Tell me. Hallelujah. Now sing the verse. Uh-huh. Y'all don't know the verse. Huh? You know this part. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord on my soul. All that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Well, we just had one of our members to be.
be elected to office and she wanted to just thank Fresh and Oni because we prayed for her and she won. So she wanted to thank the group, but I couldn't do justice to this. Where's Gina? Come on back. Come on, come on. I'm going to let you read it. And thank the congregation personally and publicly. Good morning. Good morning. Dear FACCI church family, thank you for your dedications and um, dedicated support during my most recent campaign for Upper Darby School Board Director. I am pleased to announce that I was elected on Tuesday, November 7th for the two-year term. I am very appreciative for every act of service, donation, prayer, and all words of encouragement and strength offered during this exciting journey in my life. My heart is so filled as God has entrusted me with this important role as an advocate and prayer warrior for our children and families and community and neighborhoods in Upper Darby. I am so thankful for each of you, your prayers, and your continued covering as God continues to move. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. God showed her favor. <laughs> All right, we're just going to get into the word. I'm not going to try to be before you long. But uh, I want you to turn over to Luke chapter 2. And we're going to be in that chapter. All right. We're going to read several verses there. But I want to talk about God's Christmas favor. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. God's Christmas favor. And Luke 2, 1, I actually didn't put down what version this is, but it's all right. It's the Bible. It's the Bible. That's right, Elder Scott. I'm glad to have you back, man. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're happy to have you here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some people are portable amen corners. All right, it says, now in those days, this is Luke 2, 1. In those days, an order was published by Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be registered. This was the first registration taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all the people went to their hometown to be registered. I, I find it interesting. We, we're going to be talking about the old factors of this Christmas story, the old factors. And the first O is that it starts with an order, a government order. I find that very interesting, that this story would start with this order. Uh, there was a government order and a regulation that the people had to be registered. Now, one of the things that I've learned is that sometimes saints can be the worst citizens on the planet. Somehow we think because we full of the Holy Ghost and fire baptized, that we don't have to obey regulations and government orders. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't have to say amen. Amen, Dr. Walker. And I'm meeting saints of God and have met saints of God that are getting themselves in trouble simply because they don't want to obey the law. Uh-huh. Now, the reason why Augustus wanted this registration was that he was trying to find a census to determine what the taxes were going to be. And some of the saints of God 
are getting themselves in trouble because they won't pay no taxes. Hallelujah. And then when the IRS take them to jail, the devil is a liar. No, <laughs> the devil didn't do that. That was your doing. Hallelujah. And so we ain't got to like all the orders. And to be quite frank with you, there's some orders coming down from Washington right now I don't like. But if those orders become law, guess what? We have to obey the law. First Peter chapter 2, verse 13, 15 says this. Submit yourselves, oh, for the Lord's sake, to every human authority, whether to the emperor or as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong, to commend those who do right, for it is God's will. Everybody say God's will. It is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Don't try to evangelize somebody when they know you're breaking the law. Don't you want to serve Jesus? Well, if you're representative of him, I don't. God sometimes uses a man-made order to fulfill his will. Which brings me to the second O, obedience. Listen to what the Bible says. Joseph too. Everybody say Joseph too. Now Joseph didn't say I'm exempt because I'm from the house of David. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm from good stock. I don't have to obey this law. No, the Bible says Joseph too went from the city of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant of the household of the family of David. He went there to be registered with Mary, who had been promised to him in marriage. Joseph was a model citizen. He heard the order, and he said to himself, I guess we better get to Bethlehem. And that was a 90-mile trip. Took him three days to get there. But he obeyed the order. Rebels don't like to obey the orders. People who are anti-authority don't like to obey orders. But sometimes God uses that scenario to fulfill his will. Mm -hmm. We as believers need to learn to follow orders. Uh-huh. Now the Bible says that Joseph was of the house of David. David figures prominently in this Christmas story. Joseph went to Bethlehem. Now, in obeying the Lord, he went from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Had he stayed in Nazareth, this would not have been fulfilled. But because the order required him to go from that place he was to the place he's supposed to be, he was fulfilling God's word in prophecy. Sometimes God will take that scenario of your obedience and use it to fulfill his will. 
Oh. And so David figures prominently in the story because Joseph was of the house of David, and guess what? So was Mary. So Jesus' biological parent came from the house of David. Ah, and his step-parent. That's what Joseph was. He was from the house of David. How fascinating that God would use both a biological parent and a step-parent from the house of David. That's interesting to me. It lets me know that just because you are step-parent, oh, my God don't mean you can't do great things. I find it interesting that of all the family configurations that God could have chosen to bring his son, he chose a blended family. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. He chose a blended family. A biological mother and a step-parent were the parents to Jesus Christ. It lets me know that because you're in a blended family don't mean you can't fulfill God's will. Amen. That's right. And just because you're a stepfather don't mean you can't be a good father to your non-biological children. Amen. Joseph was a good father. To Jesus. How do you think about that man? He's going to be taking care of a baby that wasn't even his biological child. But the reason he could do it was because the angel of the Lord came to him and told him, don't be afraid to take that woman to be your wife. What's in her body is of the Lord, of the Holy Spirit. You, you obey. So first he had to obey God. And secondly, he had to obey the order. Yeah. He had to obey the order. Yeah, and because of the order to his obedience, that brings us to the third O, there was an occurrence. Mm -hmm. There was an occurrence. What was the occurrence? Listen. While... They were there. Everybody say, while wow, they were there. Wow. See, when you obey God, while you are there, there's going to be an occurrence. Right. Something's going to happen. Yeah. But first, you've got to be obedient to God. While they were there, the Bible says she had her baby. Isn't it interesting? That the birth came after the obedience. Some of us are trying to birth things. And we haven't been obedient. Disobedience makes you fruitless. Makes you barren. Like David's wife. She was disobedient. She was critical of David. God said, okay, you're going to be barren for the rest of your life. And there are a lot of saints of God that are barren because of their disobedience to God's authority and to man's authority. You got to obey first. Tell somebody you got to obey first. Obedience will produce a birth occurrence. It will produce fruit. It will make you productive. And you know what? When you are pregnant with something, and by the way, let me just say that God is trying to birth something in you. God is trying to birth something through you. But the reason why the baby of your ministry hasn't come forth the reason why the baby of your idea hasn't come forth. The reason why the baby of your vision 
hasn't come forth is because of your disobedience. You got to obey first. Let me say it again. You got to obey first. I don't think they heard you. Tell somebody what I just said. And when you're pregnant with something God is trying to birth in you, you never know quite the time or the moment that that thing is going to come forth. That's why you have to obey God all along the way. Because you never know when that birth is going to come forth. So it started with an order. The order was followed by obedience. The obedience caused an occurrence or facilitated an occurrence. Ah, when the occurrence occurs, that is when your baby is born, whatever that baby is, idea, entrepreneurship, whatever it is, then comes the obligation. There's an obligation. Listen, the Bible says she gave birth to her first child and she wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a feeding trial because there was no place for them in the guest quarters. When Jesus was born, Mary's maternal obligation took over. And she realized, as any good mother, she had to nurture this child. She had to care for this child. Once whatever God is trying to birth in you comes forth, you have an obligation to take care of it. The problem with some saints they want all this spiritual birth. Hallelujah. I want to birth this ministry. I want to birth this song. I want to birth this idea. I want to birth this business. But God didn't give it to you yet because he knows you ain't going to care for it. She cared for the baby. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Not felt, not silk. Not expensive clothing, but strips of linen. And the strips of linen restricted the baby's movements. It quieted the baby. Because that closeness reminded the baby of the womb. So it was a way of getting the child to be quiet because they felt like they were in the womb. She had to wash that baby with salt and a powder-like substance to get the afterbirth liquid off of the child. I'm learning some folks are saved but still dealing with the problems with the afterbirth. We get a lot of folks saved, but they're still dealing with the effects of the afterbirth. And so not only do they need to receive Christ, they need to be cleansed continually. Afterbirth. Mary understood that. So the occurrence of the birth made a responsibility of the birth. And when you birth that which God puts in you, you are responsible to take care of it. Tell somebody you are responsible for what God is birthing in you. Hallelujah. 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 And so she outfitted, that's the next so she outfitted the baby 
in these strips of cloth. And she put him in a feeding trial. Wow. The Savior of the world, the Messiah, was put in a place where animals ate. That fascinates me. It wasn't some fancy, luxurious crib. It was a manger. Ordinary, dirty, stinky. But the Savior of the world was born in it. And our lives are mangers. Christ comes to all of the mangers in here. Your dirty, stinky manger. And he decides to rest in that which he knows is dirty and stinky. That's why you can't judge a book by its cover. Huh. And you can't judge a manger by his content. Right. Mm. Some of us were drug infested mangers. Some of us was fornicating mangers. Some of us were stealing mangers. But Jesus decided to be birthed in your heart anyway. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. I ain't always been saved. I was a liar at one point. I, I, I was a, a messed up person at one point. But Jesus, Mary's baby, came and rested his personality in my heart, in my soul, in my life. And turned this manger into a temple. Glory to God. A holy temple. Only God can turn a manger into a temple. A temple of praise. A temple of worship. Only, only God can do that. Glory to God. And so, the occurrence produced an obligation. Yeah. Yeah. Mary outfitted her child, not with luxurious stuff, but we see he was outfitted in swaddling clothes, the clothing of the poor. Jesus identified with the poor. So those of us who think we're better than the poor, guess what? Spiritually, all of you are poverty-stricken. All of you are vagabond. And were it not for Jesus, there is no telling where some of you would be. Some of you were on your way to hell in a handbasket. But God arrested you. Saved you, redeemed you. And put you on the right track. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're glad about it, give the Lord a praise offering. Ha! Huh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So she outfitted the child in swaddling clothes. It's interesting that Jesus was wrapped in linen wrappings at his birth. And wrapped in linen wrappings at his death. Linen is also symbolic of righteousness. Hallelujah. So in this dirty, stinky vessel was a symbol of righteousness. Hallelujah. What brings me to the next O I want to talk about, and that's in verse 8. It says, in that region... There were shepherds 
living in the fields, watching their flocks during the night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. When the Lord makes an appearance, huh, when the supernatural manifests itself, it comes with glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Y'all didn't catch that. God's appearance will always show up with his glory. His glory will always accompany his appearance. Whether you recognize the glory at first or not, it's going to be there. It shows up with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So those shepherds observed this glorious experience, this supernatural experience. They had an observance. And the angels that showed up, angels figured prominently in the Christmas story. It was an angel that came to Mary and told her, hey girl, I'm paraphrasing, you highly favored. Hallelujah. If God comes to you, you highly favored. Tell somebody you highly favored. Ah, I don't care what people say. I don't care what the devil told you. You are highly favored. Thank you. Thank you. The angel showed up and told her, you highly favored. And then the angel showed up and he told Joseph, don't be afraid to marry that woman. Hallelujah. If God told you to marry him, don't be afraid to marry him. I was afraid at the beginning. Watch yourself, Pastor. Watch yourself, now. Watch yourself. I, now I'm going to tell the story. Because I would, had just come out of a relationship uh -huh. where I got hurt. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to trust nobody. But the Lord said to me, marry that woman. I'm so glad I obeyed the Lord. <laughs> you got to marry the right person. I got some signs that she wasn't the right person. That other woman made some jello that wouldn't even shake. <laughs> made a cake that went snap, crackle, and pop. I said, this is God speaking to me. This is not the one. Because the woman that I made, Mary, she has to be able to cook. Because I like to eat. And the first thing she did when we were dating, that woman made me a pineapple upside down cake. The cake might have been pineapple upside down, but I was all the way right up. I said, yeah, this is it. Hallelujah. But angels spoke to Mary. Angels spoke to Joseph. An angel spoke to the shepherds. Hallelujah. They, they, they show. Angels are always around. Always around when God is about to do something significant. That's why the Bible says the angel of the Lord encampeth 
round about them that fear him. In other words, the angels set up tent. And they take it down and move when you move. Hallelujah. You ought to thank God for your angel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The angels showed up. And that brings me to the next O, the outspeaking of the angels. They said to the shepherds, stop being afraid. Listen, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. In other words, no group has a monopoly on this message. No group can claim exclusive rights to the benefits of this message. He said it's a good news and it's for all people. But y'all have to stop being afraid. <laughs> Sometimes before God can deal with your joy, he got to deal with your fear. Some of us are not experiencing maximum, ultimate joy because we're so afraid. We're scared. A bus travels down the street and everybody looks at you. You start looking at your clothes, wondering what's wrong. What's something? Up? Afraid. Afraid. People say good morning to you. Good morning. What did you mean by that? Good morning. Fear. Fear robs you of your joy. And by the way, God is interested in you having maximum joy. Hallelujah. God is not trying to raise some depressed, distressed, anxious people. He wants people with joy. You're going to need that joy when you go through. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're going to need that joy. So God has to deliver you of your fear. And the Bible says God has not even given us the spirit of fear. But sometimes that joy comes. First, you got to deal with your, your fear. But the second thing is you got to be receptive to good news. In this society, in this season, we are inundated by bad news. We get it from everywhere. TV, radio, newspaper, social media. And all, sometimes we get it from the saints. Bad news. But joy is dependent upon receiving good news. The good news of the gospel, but also the good news period. Hallelujah. When you speak to people, give them good news. Give them good news. They are inundated. They are filled with enough bad news. They don't need you, who's supposed to be a representative of the kingdom, coming with more bad news. I want somebody who can say, God going to work it out. Amen. Glory to God. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm more than a conqueror. You can make it, sister. You can make it, brother. You can do it, deacon. You can do it. You can run the race with patience and win. That's what I want to hear. Hallelujah. Because it's that kind of message that brings joy. And I think a lot of God's people are suffering needlessly because they refuse 
to believe the good news, which brings joy. The good news brings joy. The good news of Christ's birth in the world brings joy. The good news of Christ's resurrection brings joy. Hallelujah. So the angel said, this will be a sign to you when you find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trial. Know that that's a sign. It's an interesting Christ. Christmas gift was wrapped in the most unusual Christmas paper. Mm -hmm. And then they said this. They declared, they exclaimed, they decreed, they said. These were outspoken angels. They said, glory to God in the highest. Oh, my God. My God. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. First of all, they said, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the heavenlies. And one of the things that we need to do is to make sure that as we're praising God, we are conscious of the fact that he deserves the glory. You didn't save yourself. You didn't heal yourself. You didn't bless yourself. He deserves the glory. And when you realize and recognize who he is, Nobody would have to tell you to raise your hands, give him praise. Nobody would have to push you, say, come on, saints, let's praise and glorify the... No! Somebody who is blessed and saved and knows who they are will automatically be, give God the glory. They'll be looking for opportunities to praise. Can I praise God now? Got to I want to praise God. I want to praise God. I want to praise God. He's been good to me. I have to praise him. If you don't want to praise him, don't stop me. Please let me do it. Or if you don't, I'm going to do it anyway. Because God has been too good to me for me to sit down on him. I'm going to give him the glory. You know why? He deserves the glory. He deserves the glory all by himself. So I'm going to give him glory. And the angel's going to join me. And we're going to glorify God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When earth and heaven meet in their glory. What a wondrous thing. What a wondrous thing. And the outcome is the last O. The outcome is this. Hallelujah. For those on whom God's favor rests, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> you are the people on whom God's favor Y'all didn't hear what I just said. You are the people on whom God's favor rests. No, wait, wait, wait. Let me help you out. How many folk are saved? How many people know Jesus? How many folk are believers? How many folk are redeemed? How many folks have their sins forgiven? Raise your hand if you fit in any of those categories. On you, God's favor rests. What God wants you to do 
in 2018 is to enjoy his favor. To walk in his favor. To talk in his favor. To live in his favor. Too many of the saints of God in 2017 were living below God's favor because they didn't believe in the favor of God. I'm here to tell you God's going to take some of you to a new season of his favor. God's going to promote many of you to a new season of his favor. You're about to enter a new chapter of God's favor in 2018. And all the lies the devil told you in 2017, God's going to completely obliterate those lies in 2018. God wants you to enjoy his favor. He's a God of favor. And he wants you to enjoy what he gives and who he is. Jesus was God's favor incarnate. Jesus was the embodiment of God's favor. Jesus was God's favor wrapped in the flesh. And he came here not only to save you, but so you could walk in God's favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that word favor means satisfaction, delight, kindness, purpose, desire, good pleasure, goodwill, benevolence. In other words, favor ain't just about money. People who have the favor of God can get money. What you want is God's favor. His good pleasure. And guess what? As I close, it's the Father's good pleasure. It's the Father's good pleasure. In other words, it's the Father's favor to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to a new level of favor. How many want to come along? Ah. How many of you want to go to a new level of God's favor? You want to go to a new level. You tired of this ordinary. You want to go to a new level of God's favor. Hallelujah. In fact, stand on your feet and tell three people, I want to go to a new level of God's favor. His Christmas gift was a baby that brought favor. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, I got one. Hey, I got one. Says she want to go. She going with me. You ain't leaving me. If you get to favor land, I'm going with you. Glory to God. Tell that to somebody. If you get to favor land, I'm going with you. Ha! Glory. Ha! Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. I feel it. I feel it. Favor in the air. Favor. 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 Just say it. Favor. 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 Hallelujah. Speak into somebody's life and tell them right now, I wish, I pray God's favor on your life. I pray God's favor on your life. I pray, I pray God's favor on I pray God's favor on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every head.
about. Yeah, yeah, yes. Sister, read with me. <laughs> Glory to God. Over these 40 years, I've come to appreciate God's favor yes. so much. Another word for favor is grace. Yeah. Great, amazing grace, the songwriter said. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found. I was blind. But guess what? Now I see. Hallelujah. On this Christmas Eve, I'm celebrating not only when God brought my Savior into the world. I'm celebrating how God took his favor and deposited it into a baby. And he did it just for me. Just for me. <laughs> Make it personal, Brother Smith. He did it just for if you had been the only person on the earth Hallelujah. who needed Jesus he would have done it for you yes, yes, he would Hallelujah. Hallelujah so I'm rejoicing that I stand in the favor of God and that there is nothing that I will face in 2018 that God's favor can handle <laughs> Hallelujah. I've already experienced that favor in 2017. By the way, I think for 20, 2018, his favor we will glean in 2018. His favor. We will glean in 2018. In other words, we will receive. Tell somebody that. His favor. We will glean in 2018. Now praise God if you believe it. Hallelujah. Give him a praise in advance. Hallelujah. I'm praising you for what you're going to take me through. I'm praising you for what you're going to do. I'm praising you for the purpose that you're going to run in my life. I'm praising you in advance. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. As you're standing, As every head is bowed, every eye is closed. The first favor you want to receive from God is the favor of his son. He is the